air show opened as usual at Farnborough, and the heavy rain couldn't mar the enthusiasm of preview day visitors as they reviewed a year of aviation achievement. Looking quite at home in the water was the Ferry FD2 with its swordfish nose. While it rained, the static aircraft exhibition, displaying mighty jet engines, provided statistical interest for the air-minded. But as always, the main attraction of this show, organised by the Society of British Aircraft Constructors, was the flying display. Here's the Victor, a four-jet bomber, now in super-priority production for the RAF. Everyone wanted to see the Olympus engine Canberra, the machine that recently raised the world altitude record to nearly 12 and a half miles. While the appearance of high-speed swept-wing jet fighters reassured onlookers that Britain's Air Force is not lacking high-performance machines. On the opening day, the visitors were joined by the Prime Minister, Sir Anthony Eden, who arrived in appropriate style on a fact-finding investigation. Earl Mountbatten was another visitor. In recent years, the helicopter has played an ever-increasing role in our national life. And in keeping with this trend, the ferry jet Gyrodyne can function either as a helicopter or an autogyro. Another ferry product is the new ultra-light helicopter, which recently made its initial flight. Designed primarily for army observation, its cabin position gives an unobstructed field of vision. In this jet age of increasing speed, Britain is also improving her aviation safety standards. At Chalgrove, near Oxford, squadron leader Fifield prepares to parachute from an aircraft at ground level. The plane, a two-seater meteor jet, moves along the runway. On reaching takeoff speed, about 150 miles an hour, the flyer operates his automatic ejector seat. The parachute opens and he floats unharmed to Earth, the first man to make an ejector seat escape at ground level. Back above Thunderer for the 1955 cavalcade of aviation progress. In the field of civil flying, the Comet 3 is paving the way for the greatest comet of them all, the Mark IV. A Scottish Triumph, the Twin Pioneer, designed for use on small runways. A service model, the Avro Vulcan, the world's first Delta Wing four-jet bomber. From Canada comes the CF-100, a two-seater, long-range, all-weather fighter for use in Arctic defence. The Nat, a lightweight fighter. The Herald, a transport aircraft that has just made its maiden flight. Lastly, a tribute to the Hawker Hunter, already in service as the mainstay of European defence. And at the end of the day's show, Sir Anthony Eden left Falmora in a new Vulcan Delta Wing aircraft.